This is Marquita Ellis, though I am currently with IBM Research, Scaling Generalized End-Body Problems, a case study from genomics, is work I did at Berkeley and LBNL with Aiden Baluch and my PhD advisor, Catherine Yellick. To jump right in, for a data-intensive irregular application from genomics, two data-independent approaches to the many-to-many -many communication are considered. One, maximizing bandwidth utilization and message cost amortization via aggregation. The other, maximizing injection speed and hiding communication. Now, in the teaser results I'm showing, communication hiding seems to be trivially the right approach. But what I hope to convey in the rest of this talk is that balancing communication, computation, and memory, not just in this problem, but for this type of problem, is non-trivial. Why is it non-trivial? Let me give you some application background. Genome sizes, a key factor of the input sizes, are highly variable and can be large, from an example 22 billion base pair pine tree to a 150 billion base pair Japanese flower. Sequencers, which translate nanometer scale DNA molecules into human and computer readable strings, have limitations. In general, today's sequencers cannot read entire genomes at once, and they produce errors. Redundancy, scanning the molecule over and over again to produce overlapping strings called reads representing DNA fragments, is used to compensate. This also, however, typically increases the input data size to our problem by an order of magnitude. Further, redundancy or repeats are inherent in many genomes, especially in plants, which are interesting to research on biofuels, medicines, and so on. So sophisticated string similarity measurement, in this case pairwise alignment, is required to compute which subsets of input strings came from the same place in the sequence genome. Pairwise alignment in general is big O of little n squared. With n reads, the whole problem can be solved in big O of n squared times little n squared via a big all to all and quickly becomes intractable for large and growing data sizes. In practice, runtime analysis is used to prune some of the pairwise string comparisons. This yields a sparse, unstructured graph that is still very large and discoverable only at runtime. Additionally, heuristic approaches to pairwise alignment can reduce the little n squared to big O of little n. However, they are typically dynamic and rely on early termination, which only adds to the computational irregularity in the overall problem. From analyzing patterns of this and other bioinformatics problems, we recognized it as a representative generalized end body problem from genomics. Generalized end body problems are a proper superset and abstraction over classic end body simulations. They measure some type of similarity between all or many pairs or tuples of bodies, i.e., measurements are many to many or all to all and may be non Euclidean or higher dimensional. Our generalized end body instance is a many to many comparison of long variable length strings, the bodies, via pairwise alignment, the similarity metric. Our case also has significant similarities to other generalized end body problems from bioinformatics and informatics more generally. Our focus under the Exascale Computing Project has been to develop scalable software for current specific scientific problems while also generating insights for new problems and datasets. With this in mind, this work focuses on data independent approaches. The first of our two data independent approaches focuses on maximizing bandwidth utilization for the sparse many to many string exchange and also maximizes the amount of independently parallel pairwise alignment computation for the given partitioning of reads and tasks. Note, for every pairwise alignment, at least one, but not necessarily both, of the respective strings or reads are local. Depending on memory capacity relative to working dataset sizes, multiple memory-limited exchanges may be required. We will see how our 
MPI implementation performs with real datasets in a moment. In the second data independence approach, each remote string is retrieved one at a time asynchronously as necessary. Each parallel processor P sub zero to P sub little p minus one could be doing one of three things at a high level at any given point in time executing a potentially long-running pairwise alignment task with local data, issuing a non-blocking request for remote data, or responding to an asynchronous request for local data. So we have highly variable computation overlapping highly variable communication, and it's not clear from the outset how well these will perform in practice. The asynchronous approach has the potential to roughly maximize injection speed by firing asynchronous string requests as quickly as possible, and to roughly minimize the memory footprint, in theory, by not requiring more than one remote read on each processor at a time in order to make progress. It also has the potential to hide the communication costs with computation. However, practically speaking, it also maximizes the number of messages, pays the round-trip cost for each, and has great potential to exacerbate the load imbalance overall. How well do these approaches perform with real workloads? Our experiments were conducted on the Cori KNL supercomputer at SNRSC with three real workloads. More details on the full experimental setup and validation are in the paper. For now, I'm going to focus on the strong scaling results for the largest workload. This is the same teaser figure shown at the beginning. It shows a runtime breakdown for each approach side by side, strong scaling the human CCS workload on Cori KML from eight nodes to 512 nodes. The computation time in gray for each approach is the same as it should be. Each is processing the same workload. The synchronization time in orange is related in that it is dominated by the computational load imbalance from the dynamic pairwise alignment tool used in each implementation. Let's focus now, though, on the communication in blue. From 8 to 32 nodes, the BSP's approaches communication overhead is a whopping 18 to 37% of its runtime. Zooming in, between 8 and 32 nodes, multiple exchanges are necessary due to per node memory limits resulting in an efficiency gap up to 20% between the two approaches. When the BSP approach is able to perform a single exchange strong scaling from 64 to 512 nodes, the relative communication overhead decreases and the efficiency gap becomes 4 to 13% versus up to 20%. What are the relative unhidden communication costs of each approach, though? We implemented a mode in the code that skips the pairwise alignment computation to cross-check the communication measurements. The asynchronous approach sends many more messages with variable ground-trip latency. Then again, strong scaling, the number of messages scales inversely with the number of parallel processors. So what we see here is that the cumulative async communication scales linearly from 1,000 to 32,000 parallel processors, or 16 to 512 nodes. And it turns out that there is sufficient computation to hide the communication costs in aggregate. On the other hand, the bulk synchronous version actually has lower latency initially, but with the inherent synchronization and other overheads, it doesn't scale as well in this case. Cori, of course, is outfitted with an HPC high bandwidth, low latency interconnect. So what do we expect across architectures and for similar problems with different ratios of communication to computation? First of all, we suspect that these results could very well flip on a high bandwidth, high latency interconnect. We have seen this in the past for similar applications over Ethernet, for example. The keys for effective communication computation overlap here are the balance of round trip or one-sided message latencies to pairwise or tuplewise computations on average. One example implication being that optimizing the computation pairwise alignment in this case 
can only be done independently from the communication optimization up to a point, after which communication optimizations such as increased aggregation or switching to lower latency primitives, etc., will be necessary. The keys for bulk synchronous approaches to these problems are bisection bandwidth and memory enabling or limiting message aggregation for the many-to-many -many communication. We expect that optimization to the computation will lower the number of parallel processors at which performance crosses over from being computation bound to communication bound for any given workload. Other opportunities and optimization suggestions are highlighted in the full text. It also goes into much more depth on the computational and communication load imbalance, among other aspects of performance. Finally, the code is available on SourceForge under project name Dabella. It can be used with general inputs for read-to-read -read overlap and alignment. It can even be used for other bioinformatics problems with reasonable refactoring effort. Of course, it can be used for performance-focused studies and benchmarking as demonstrated here. I would like to acknowledge our supporters and very importantly, our five anonymous reviewers for their invaluable feedback. The paper is much better for it. And now I will take any questions and if there is enough interest, I have an appendix, which includes a cute little limit on the limitations to partitioning the genomics problem and a closer look at some of the data sets generated with Debella and plotted with some simple Python.